Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Nick White here. We're doing a Python from scratch tutorial today, all the way up until the point where, you know, maybe we can even build apps or do some little projects at the end. This is gonna be eight hours, long stream, like something like that. And uh, yeah, we're going from very beginner stuff. I'm gonna be explaining very beginner concepts all the way to like higher level stuff. Why should you watch this tutorial? There's like a million tutorials, right? Basically, I'm not editing this. I'm not cutting this up, making it look perfect, getting rid of all the errors. You know, this is me. I haven't done Python. I learned it like years ago and I barely learned it. It was like the first one I learned, language I learned and I don't remember anything. So what I wanna do is get proficient in it again and you know, that's it. We'll run into a bunch of errors. You'll see me do that. Other videos might be edited and you might be confused at some parts, but you can't ask them questions and uh, they don't, they cut all the errors out of the video. So this one will include, you know, all the mistakes and everything. So first of all, I don't even, this is a new computer. I'm going to, I have to install Python on it. So for us to even start working in Python, this is an easy, okay. Also, Python is a programming language, by the way. I'm sure you knew that from clicking on the video, but it is uh, one of the most simple programming languages. It's one of the most popular right now, especially machine learning, which is growing. It's one of the most important fields right now. It probably is the most important field at the moment. Um, Python is like the leading, you know, the king of all that. And uh, it's like a really good programming language to learn, to get started with stuff, super powerful. You can do everything you want in it. So it's like really one of the best programming languages. So that's why you should learn it. Okay, let's learn it. So python.org. This is going to be our starting point, guys. So python.org. Now, all we'll have to do is, uh, you know, it says downloads, right? So if we go to downloads, it looks like we have some options, right? Windows, Mac OS, uh, you know, whatever, all these alternatives. I mean, you're probably on Windows or Mac, right? Or Linux or something like that. So figure out where, you know, what, what your system is and pick that, right? So I have Windows. Now I'm going to click Windows, right? And don't pick these, don't pick these, pick the stable release, right? Stable, right? So a stable release, it looks like right here, this looks fine, cannot be used on Windows XP or earlier. I don't think I have Windows XP or earlier. I think I have, you know, something else. So we're gonna be good here. Um, looks good, looks good, looks good. So where do we download this? Okay, it says files. Um, all right, we're just gonna go down here and pick something, it says, Windows zip file? I mean, I don't really know. This looks fine to me, to be honest. Maybe I should have read that, but I clicked on it. Okay. Uh, this, 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 this. Python, da, 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 da. So I don't know why it separated them up there into operating systems, and then down here it has all the choices anyway. So, I mean, we're just gonna open this up. All right, uh, Python zip file. How do we? How do we do this? Where is it? Python 3.8, 3.8.1, what is this it? Open. Okay, how do we do it, guys? Um, this is live, by the way. Maybe this? Okay, we're gonna try this one instead. See, this is an error already, you know? So maybe they would cut that out of the tutorial, but that's in here. Uh, it's confusing. I don't know which one to download, right? So I'm picking this, you know, gzipped source tarball. So this looks right, right? This looks fine. So now we click on that. You know, you might have to do the Mac or whatever. So you're gonna have to kind of figure that out. But um, it said it can't do that one either. Okay, so we're gonna hit this one now. We're trying all of them, it looks like. There we go, we found one that's working for us. So we're just, in, you know, we're trying them all, okay. Uh, we're going to click this. We're going to click this. Great. We're installing Python. Awesome. So that was the one that it was for us. That was a executable installer. So that was the one we chose. Uh, you might have to choose, you know, right? Mac or whatever, Windows, you might have to choose a different one. Okay. So now we'll just wait for this to install. Any moment now. We, we will meditate while this happens. Mm, I want to be the best programmer of all time. I'm going to be smarter than Steve Jobs, even though he didn't even program. All right, we're going to keep going. Uh, here we go. We're good. We did it. Okay, so now we have Python installed, I think. 
So what you can do to check is you could do command option and then you know I think on Mac it's like or a command space and you have you type in terminal on Mac it's terminal on Windows it's CMD they're kind of like the similar things so we type Python okay that doesn't work Python 3 okay so that doesn't work so maybe I'm not 100% sure on that yet okay so let's what happens now did that give any instructions that gave literally no instructions so what where's Python now is it installed who knows idle okay we have idle so this is good idle okay so maybe we'll use idle so idle comes with python apparently so idle is a development environment for python so we can write python code in here right we can write print hello world right i know that's a python thing so let's just make sure that this is good and then how do you run it so you run the code how do you run the code do you do what it, file save save as okay we'll save as we'll say main.py okay there we go so we'll save the file as main.py and then we want to run it now right so how do you do that shell stack options window help is there a command to run it uh i think it was like f something I mean, I feel like you should be able. To, oh, you just pre, you just press enter, guys. Oh, just to run your code, you press enter. Okay, that makes sense. So, what if we want to edit the code in like a separate file, though? Right? Can we open? Can we open this like as a? Can we open this in a separate file? Because that would be, you know, nice, right? We want to open module. No. We want to, we want a separate file. This is gonna be annoying to just write all the code in here, right? So maybe, oh, here's the new file. Okay, so here's this, and then you can hit run. Okay, so we're gonna use idle. So this is, uh, you just, once you have Python installed on Mac or Windows, I'm pretty sure all you have to do is, you know, you could do command space on Mac, type in idle, we'll open this up. That's what we have right here. This is where we're gonna, be, this is where we're gonna write our Python code. Okay, great. So then what I did is I, you know, I, I made a new file. Okay, so we're gonna make a new file and then here's our new file that popped up, right? So this is gonna be where the code runs, this big box right here. And uh, then this thing down here, wherever it is, this, this is going to be the file where we write the code. So we'll write the code in here. So let's, let's just control save. We're gonna call this tutorial.py. So first of all, .py means it's a Python file. So all of your Python files have to be something .py. It doesn't matter what you call it, but it has to have .py to know it's a Python file. MP4 is a video file. .text is a text file. Every different kind of file has its own file extension. This thing is a file extension. This thing at the end, Python has its own file extension, .py. So we hit save, okay, great. We have tutorial.py. Let's try print hello world. This is the first thing we do in every programming language. You don't even have to know what it is, but we'll just do this. Print, it's quotes, hello world, and then we will run. So run module is F5. Okay, so that's a shortcut if you wanna try F5. I don't know if that works on Mac, but I hit F5 on Windows, boom, it works. Otherwise, you know, you could just have the file and you could just hit run and then you just, you know, hit run module or whatever. Okay, so that's not that bad. We've got a little setup here. We have a setup going here. So, I wrote on a notepad before this, kind of like how we would do this. Okay, so installation. Go and find your correct installation thing. I had to try three of them before I found the right one. EXE was uh, the one that was good for Windows, but, you know, for Mac, figure it out. You know, there's a bunch of them, but you're just going to have to mess around, download a few different ones. Numbers, strings, variables, comments. Okay, so I know a little bit about this. I understand a little bit about this. I can take us through the beginnings, right? Numbers. You type numbers, right? You have numbers that exist in the real world, right? Uh, you know, five is a number, four is a number. This is giant number is a number, right? Um, so you can type numbers in Python, right? And what we do, why would we type numbers? Well, you wanna, you wanna make a program, so... Um, there's there's a few reasons that we want to do numbers. You can do basic math in Python, for example. So, here's how we're going to use numbers. There's these things. Let's I guess let's start with variables. There are these things called variables. So, 
variables can be anything you want. You could call them whatever you want. So I can call my variable, you know, x. At like, and then I can say equals, and then I say five. And now I can say y, and I could say equals, and I could say five. Oh, this, this is probably like kind of small, so I should probably zoom in, honestly, just so you guys could see better. How do I zoom in? Options, configure idle. How do I make the font bigger? How do I make the font bigger? Font. So you might want to do this too to make the font bigger because it's it's pretty small to be honest. Um, fonts, size 10. Okay, let's do 20. Okay. There, there we go. All right, that's a lot better. So you can probably see a little bit better now. Um, so X is five, Y is five. So what do you think X plus Y would be? Well, if x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 5, then x plus y is equal to 10. So that is, uh, yeah, that's how it is. So a variable, you can call it whatever you want. I mean, you can't call it like this. You can't call it like that. Like that's, you can, it's not a bunch of special characters. We just, just be normal. You just call them like words or something. So you could say, you know, variable. You can call it, you know, words, just regular letters. You can put like underscores. That's a common pattern. You can do like, you know, whatever. You can put basically whatever, just not uh, crazy special characters. Okay, so we're gonna do x is equal to five, y is equal to five. Now we can print the result of this. Printing basically will just show output, right? Printing is used to print output. It only prints it uh, so that you can see it in like a debugger or the, you know, interpreter or whatever and, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we just hit print x plus y, and then we, you know, run the code. There we go. So x plus y is 10, right? That makes sense. So x is 5, y is 5. So when you print x plus y, you get 10. That makes sense, right? Um, so what should we do now? Uh, well, let's talk about strings. Okay, so we can't. We don't have to just print numbers. We can also print strings. And you could also assign variables to strings. So let's make a variable called string. And this will say, hello world. Now, what is a string? A string is basically text. So there's numbers and there's text. But we don't store text like this. This is, this is, that text is reserved for like variable names or code. The text, when we want to actually uh, print like, you know, text, like, like uh, lines of text, like paragraphs, passages, or something like that, you have to put it in quotes because that distinguishes it from actual code. So code does not is not in quotes, but like text that you want to print or do something with or do calculations with, like just text that you're using, uh, that goes into strings, which are in quotes. So you can call, you know, string equals hello world, and then we can print, you know, string. So what is print string going to print? Well, string is going to print hello world. Great. So what do we know so far? We can make variables. You make names for variables. You assign them using equals, right? So you just make a name of variable, variable equals something, and you assign it to, you know, whatever you want. There's two types we know so far. We can assign it a number to a variable, or we can assign a, we can assign a string to a variable. So when we print variable, we are printing something. Great, okay, that makes sense. Okay, um, so we got numbers, we got uh, variables, we did strings. Now, what else do we wanna cover? Um, um, you can add numbers, you could do, okay, so let's go over some more calculations, right? Let's just do a couple more calculations first. That makes sense, right? So let's do x equals five. Um, you know, y equals two. So you can also do print uh, x times, so times in code is the asterisk. So you could do x times y. So that's gonna be five times two. So when you do five times two, that's gonna be 10, right? Five times two is 10, right? So you can multiply numbers, you can divide numbers. So if we do, you know, 10 divided by two, we should get five, so x divided by two, we'll get five. Okay, right, five. Well, you get 5.0, okay. Uh, there's also a difference between integers, and we'll get into that later, honestly. There's a difference between integers, there's a difference between numbers, 
integers are whole numbers, right? So integers are just 10, five or whatever. There's a difference between integers and floating point values. So floating point values are when they have a decimal. So 0 uh, or 0.21. So there's a difference in code the way, between the way that just whole integer numbers are stored and how floating point and uh, decimal values are stored. So we refer to like decimal values like this. These are floating point numbers in Python and uh, regular numbers like just 10, those are integer values. Uh, that's not fully that important right now, but you know, that's just a good thing to keep in mind that there is a difference the way that we talk about these things. Um, so you can do division, you can do multiplication, you can do adding, you can do subtracting, 10 minus two is eight, right? So if we print this, 10 minus two is eight. Okay, great. All right. Everyone understands that. Okay, great. So now, okay, this is good. What else? Now, there are comments, right? There's comments in code. So we can write a bunch of bull crap in here, and it's basically you make multi-line comments. So you can just fill this up, and it won't break the code, right? If you write all of this crap outside of these quotes, it's going to break the code when you run it. Like, there's going to be errors. Like, this is not code, right? This is not valid code. But since it's in these triple quotes, like three quotes, and then three quotes, and then, so you put three pairs of quotes, you can write whatever you want. All you have to do is close that block with another pair of three quotes. So when you run this, it's gonna break. Because look at that, this this stuff doesn't exist in programming, right? I'm um, sorry, I picked the wrong one. This stuff doesn't exist in code, right? This isn't code, this is just a bunch of bull crap. So you have to delete this, and when you run this though, if you have like actual code down here, like this is actual code, like print hello world, right? Then, you know, that's fine, right? This is fine because it's in a comment, right? The comments do not get evaluated as, you know, code. So if you wanna make comments, you can put whatever you want as long as you put three pairs of quotes and then whatever you want and then another three pairs of quotes and you have to close that off in like this giant block, okay. Now, besides that, you can also do single line comments. So single line comments, you just use a hashtag and you can write, this is only one line of junk though. So you can write whatever you want here, but down here, it's gonna break it if you write a bunch of junk, right? So you can only do this for one line if you have the hashtag. So what are comments used for? Comments are used for, if you have this huge code base, right? And a bunch of people are working on it, maybe there's something like detailed that people won't understand when they look at your code. So you might wanna put a line and be like, you know, this, you don't want it to break the code. So you just put this little comment and you just say, hey, this prints hello world if you didn't know. And then people read that and be like, oh, this prints hello world. This doesn't break the code, but uh, it'll help, you know, explain, usually use it to help explain code or explain something that people might not understand in the code base. So there you go. That's, that's, uh, those are comments, right? So what else should we talk about? There's variables, strings. So what do we do with strings? Okay, um, well basically uh, we know that we can store variables. Oh, another thing about variables is, okay, if you have x equals five and y equals five, you can make z is equal to x plus y, right? So if you do z equals x plus y, and then you print z, print the value of z, you can, by the way, you can print, you can print these numbers, you can print these vari, you can print variables, you could print numbers directly. So I can print five plus five. You know, I could, if I print five plus five, that's gonna print 10. You could print strings directly. You could print variables. There's, you could print like a lot of different stuff, right? So just so you know that, print is, you know, a function that prints stuff. It's built into Python. This is like a built-in thing in most programming languages. It's just print parentheses, whatever's in the parentheses, you could put in there and it will print it to output, okay. So we print five plus five, that prints 10, right? Okay, if we print Z, that will also print 10 because that Z is equal to X plus Y and X plus Y is, oh no, can you not see what I'm, uh, what I'm doing? Let me make sure, because I know that I'm in the way here. So let me just put myself over here a little bit, to be honest. That makes more sense. Okay, great. Um, so hopefully you've been able to see what I've been doing up until now, but that's fine. Okay. <sighs> this is going to be a long stream anyway. So let's, let's, let's keep, let's keep it going. So now what do we do with strings? Okay. We can make two strings, right? We could say, um, you know, first string will be equal to hello. 
second string will be equal to world. So now what happens when we print first string plus second string? You know, I'm just experimenting here, right? I'm not an expert in Python. We're learning from this from scratch together. I'm just going to, okay, so it prints hello world. Now, the thing is, we need a space in there, right? That That's not a word. Hello world, hello world. You know, that's, that's not a word, that's not really a word. So all you have to do is just add a space in here. And then look, if you add a space at the end, spaces are counted in these strings, right? So if I do this, you know, there's gonna be a bunch of spaces in there, I'm pretty sure. Look at that, so you can see all of these spaces. Look at that, okay. So what you wanna do is just make sure you're adding the correct amount of spaces. You know, you can look at that yourself. Now, oops, sorry. So the strings, so you can add strings together, right? So addition of strings in Python, it'll just put them together, right? You know what I mean? So the strings just get added together into one giant string or whatever. So um, we can do this. This is gonna be the correct you know, way to do it. So if we look at this, look, hello world, great, it's fine. Now let's let's add them together together in the variable. So, you know, we could say, let's just make a variable and we'll say, okay, greeting is equal to first string plus second string. Okay, now let's print greeting and it should give us the same thing, right? I hope you guys are kind of understanding this. I mean, I feel like it makes sense what I'm saying so far, right? Okay, look, it's the same thing, right? Because greeting is equal to first string plus second string. Okay, we get it. So the strings get combined. Okay, what if we don't want to add the spaces? What if the spaces are annoying? Like, what can we do anything else to put these spaces here? Well, yes, we can, I think. I think. Okay, so we could do first string plus a space plus second string because it just adds all the strings together. Look at that. That might be a little bit cleaner, right? So you just add spaces in the print statement if you want to, or you just add space. Okay, look, so we have three ways. So you could just add spaces like that too. Okay, so we can add numbers. What do we know so far? We installed Python. We have idle, this little environment. We can, we need a Python file, a .py file. We make a .py file. We can make variables. We can assign numbers. We can assign strings. We can add numbers. We can print numbers. We can divide, multiply, do all these things, subtract with numbers. We can also add strings, okay? Now we can combine strings. We can make strings and variables. We can print strings. This is pretty good so far. Where is all this going? Is this relevant to coding? Yes, it is, because once you know all these fundamentals, which we're kind of going through pretty quickly, like there's really not that many, um, we can, we'll take these into building an actual program and this stuff comes in handy. Like you need to know this stuff to actually write code. Like we're gonna be able to, I think the first thing we're gonna build is like maybe a web scraper. We're gonna go on the internet and get information from a website and pull it down, okay? So, all right. Um, okay, what, do, what else should we do now that we have uh, strings? We can, we, what happens when we subtract strings, I guess? So what is world minus world? Let's say, what is world space world minus world? Do, is, I'm, I'm assuming since we added them and they just combined that when we take a world, world space world and we minus world, we're just gonna get world space, right? So if we do first string minus second string, you know, we're just messing around here, figuring this out. What do we get? Whoa, so you can't do it. Okay, so you can't do it. So that's, it looks like we cannot subtract strings, but we can add strings. So I didn't know that. I did not know that. So that's good to know. Great. Um, that's interesting. So I wonder why that is, but that's fine. So how do we, how can we, let's start learning through, walking through this a little bit more. So how can, how can we do this? How can we remove world from world, right? Um, so what you can do when you're learning Python is you can actually look things up. There's this thing called the internet. Um, subtracting strings Python. So we do that, how to subtract strings in Python. So it looks like you have to replace, you replace. Oh, all right. 
All right, so we'll get into that later. It looks like you can't do that, so that's unfortunate. I thought that would be, you know, that, that seems like a good thing to have, but, you know, I guess it makes sense. Okay. So, all right, that's the end of the line. Four strings, variables, numbers. Let's let's move on. We got comments. We, we understand a little bit of basic stuff here. Now, let's, let's go into lists. Okay. So... What is a list? Well, we can make a list is a variable, not don't write the word list. Uh, there's built it, there's keywords in Python that you don't want to, you know, call your variables or something that you just want to call them. If it turns purple in the editor, that's not good. Don't call your variable that. So you can call it some list, but the word list is a reserved word in Python. So don't call it that. Okay. A list has brackets. Okay. So braces. So we have an opening and closing brace and we could fill this list with strings or numbers so we could do one two three four five six seven seven so look at that we have a list um and then if we print we could print lists the variable for list okay so what happens if we print this list oh it prints the list okay that makes sense right doesn't that make sense that's pretty obvious okay so well we can also fill this list with strings right and it doesn't have to be sorted numbers it could be like you know, whatever, 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 you know, whatever, right? So you can do this too. See, doesn't have to be sorted. Uh, so we can actually fill this list with strings as well. So string one, um, string two, string three. Okay, look, so commas, commas separate the things in the list, by the way, if you didn't notice that. Look at that, string one, string two, string three. So there you go. We could fill our list with the stuff that we already learned and it's good, okay. So we could store things in lists. So if you have a bunch of variables and you want them in like a sort certain order or something, you might wanna put them in a list or if we want, you know, just to keep some kind of structure, like basically, you know, you might wanna have a grocery list. That's a basic example, right? So like a list of, you know, milk, eggs, uh, you know, whatever you know chocolate that's a weird grocery list right so you have a, this grocery list however you spell grocery and you know maybe we build a program that we go to the store with a certain amount of money you know so we have this grocery list and we'll say you know we'll say money that we have to spend so we'll say we have 10 bucks and you know, maybe each of them costs a dollar and then as we go, we subtract from our money. So, you know, when we buy the stuff, okay. So, all right, we have a list, we can use lists, but let's t let's talk about something else now. If, let's talk about if else statements, to be honest. So if we have, so we have X equals five, right? And we have Y equals five. What if we want to do something based on something, right? If x equals 5, then we want z to equal x plus y. Otherwise, maybe we want, you know, z to equal x minus y. So let's see what happens when we print. What do you guys think? I would pause the video or think about this. What do you think z would be after this executes? Well, z is going to be 10. Z is going to be 10 because X is equal to five. So this equals, when you do double equals, that is checking for equality. So you're checking that this X, which means, which is set to five. So one equals is setting something to something. So one equal sign is I'm saying, okay, X is equal to five. I'm saying that I'm making that statement. I'm putting at five, I'm assigning five to the variable X. When I have double equals, we're checking that our variable x is equal to five. So you're doing, you're, you're usually using that to check for equality, you know? So I'm checking, okay, is x equal to five? And you can put parentheses around this to make it look a little bit neater, right? That's how you should do it. You put parentheses uh, just, to, you know, to put your conditions, right? So if and else are a thing, if and else are a, it's called, they're conditional statements in programming, right? So if and else, you use if and else for checking conditions, because if you want to do something, these are reserve keywords, right? Reserve keywords in Python. So if you do if 
So if something in these parentheses, if something is true, so if this is true, if x is equal to five, which it is, because we assigned five to x, then we will do whatever is below. So you put a colon, and then you put whatever is below, right? It has to be indented too, right? Python's really strict about indentation, so it cannot look like this. It's gonna give us like an indent error. Unexpected an indent block. So you actually have to have correct indentation here. So if x is equal to five, so if x is equal to five, colon, then you put, okay, then we wanna say that z is equal to x plus y. x plus y is five plus five. So we're gonna say that z is equal to 10. Otherwise, if f, x isn't equal to five, then we're gonna say z is equal to x minus y, five minus five, which is zero. So x is equal to five, so z is equal to x plus y, which is 10, right? And that's what we got. Now, what if x wasn't equal to five? What if x is equal to six? Then we wanna do z is equal to x minus y, because it's not equal to five. Okay, do you guys get it? I feel like I'm beating, uh, beating it to the ground, okay. So what can we use this for? We can use this for a lot of things, right? Um, if something is happening, then do something else, right? If this is basically how all, this is like the main part of programming. If something happens, do something else. That's basically how program, that's how programming started. Like when people were building the first program, like first, uh, computers, like it was all these switches, like these big machines and you would change these switches so that if something happened, something else would happen, right? Um, now it's, you know, a lot easier than that. You just write if, and then you put the condition in these braces. But, um, this is basically a condition that you put in these, you know, parentheses, you put the parentheses around it to kind of encapsulate the condition. There's also these built-in words in Python, true and false. So if true, these, so this evaluates to true, right? So true and false are the main things for conditions, right? Conditional statements. These are Booleans, it's what it's called. You don't have to really, you know, you don't have to remember that, it's good to know, but uh, it's basically Boolean is true or false, right? So if X is equal to five, this evaluates to one of these reserve keywords in Python. Um, whether it's true or false will be based on some other information, whether it gets evaluated. So if X is equal to six, uh, five, it's not, it's six. So this is going to evaluate to false and it's capital F-A-L-S-E. So if false, then we do this. So if you just put the word false, this is not going to happen. This will happen. So we run this and it's gonna be, you know, six minus five is one, right? Cause that didn't get executed. Z didn't get equal to X plus five because if false, that is going to for sure not happen. If true, that is for sure going to happen. So just so you guys know, true and false, you can also use to make things happen. But mainly we never, we don't, we don't do this. We just, uh, if, if you put if true, that means that this will for sure happen. And this might as well not exist in there, this else. So usually you have this, you know, be some kind of condition based on something of what you want to happen. Okay. Okay. So, all right, we have uh, we've learned, you know, there's there's variables, there's strings, there's comments, there's Python. We have okay, we have variables, numbers, string. Variables can be assigned to numbers and strings. We can make lists of these numbers and strings. We can make lists of these variables as well. So if we didn't do that, some lists can be equal to x, y, z, right? So we have a list of these numbers, right? So if we look down here, if we do this, and then we make these variables, x equals five, y equals six, z equals seven. Oops, z equals seven. And then we put these in here, what's gonna happen? Well, if we print some list, it's going, what do you think it's going to print, guys? I mean, we're getting a little bit repetitive here. This is five, six, seven. So we put X, Y, Z in five, six, seven, correct? Pretty straightforward. Five, six, seven. Okay. It's a list of five, six, seven. Okay. We have lists, variables, numbers, variables can be assigned to lists. So list can be, <laughs> list can be assigned to variables. Um, variables can be put in lists. Now, what if we did this? Think about this, guys. What if we did this? What if we tried to put these in 
to the list after we're trying to basically what's happening here there's order in code there is order when you write code as well so when you write code you cannot just put things into a list that don't exist these do not exist yet so code get executes gets executed line by line so when you look at this X, Y, and Z don't exist yet. So when we put this in here, they don't even exist. So this code is not gonna work from my understanding. So look, it, X is not defined. X doesn't exist yet, so this line cannot be written until X, Y, and Z exist. So once they exist, then you can put them in there. So that, that makes sense, right? So Z equals X plus Y. This, this has to be after X and Y exist, right? This cannot be, you know, when we're putting z equals x plus y we can't put this before x and y exist or we're gonna get an error right uh you know i'm trying to you know that makes sense right everyone gets it right okay this also so x is not defined so you know we're gonna get an error so we're the first error that happens is what we're gonna get also we can't print things that don't exist so when we try and print some list this is a variable so we can't just print some list that doesn't exist right some list is not defined we have to have things declared before we use them right if we did some list in a string that's fine because that's a string that's just a you know type so all right um we've learned a lot so far right variables can hold numbers uh lists variables um you know what else what else can we go over what else can we go over is this a pre-recorded session or something no this is live but i can't be taking advice from everyone in the chat because uh it will distract me from you know giving uh you know people tell me to do things so i don't want to listen to you know people telling me to do things or otherwise the video will get distracted all right back to the tutorial so what else can we go over so i guess we can do let's talk about dictionaries so there's a few there's there's these thing called data structures so a list is actually a data structure and a data structure is a structure for data right so one two three four five this is a structure this this little thing you could think of it as like a structure that holds numbers are a type of data so this is a type of data um actually we didn't go over everything in a list a list has elements so each element is separated by a comma so one is an element two is an element three is an element four is an element five is an element if we were to make these strings you know like we did earlier string one string one string two string three string four right i wish i could spell string one string two you know it's string three string four etc if you were to make it like this you know this is uh, the first element this is the second element this is the third element uh lists actually have some kind of order so we can get, we can retrieve that. Why would we want to put these into a list? Like how do we get the values out of the list? You can access the values from the list by using this notation. So this, these braces, if you put these braces, you put the variable name that has, that's, has the list. So this list is assigned to this variable name. And then you reference the elements that you want to retrieve from the list in the order. Um, so this is called an index. So an index is a position of an element in a list. So this is at index zero. It is the zeroth element of the list. That's basically first, but we do it by index zero. So this is index zero. This is index one. This is index two. So if we reference print, if we print some list, and then this is the notation to retrieve it. So you do some list braces zero, we'll get the first index. So it's index zero, index one, index two, get it? So if we were to run this, you get string one, right? Because that is the zeroth index of this list, right? That's the first element. If you were to do index one, you would get string two, correct? String two, got it. If we were to print two, we would get string three, 
correct? Oops. F5. There we go, we got string three. Now what if we were to do one that doesn't exist? What if we were to do string four or string three? You know, this is index zero, index two, one, index two. What about index three? What if it doesn't exist? What happens? We're going to get an index out of bounds error. That means that we're out of bounds of the list. So this is index list, it's out of range. There is no index, so it's gonna give you an error, so it's not good to do that. So you have to be aware of your boundaries. It goes from zero to you know z the length of the list minus one. So what is the length of the list? The length of the list is uh, one, two, three. So the length is there's three elements, and you can retrieve the length of a list by doing this. Some list, you get, uh, there's a built-in function in Python, you can do len. So len of some list. So len of some list should give us three. There's It's the number of elements in the list. So one, two, three. So there you go, you get three. That is the length of the list. Now, if we want to find the number of indices in a list, so the number of indexes we can go up to, the first one is always zero. The first index of a list is always zero. But the number, of, the maximum index of a list is length of the list minus one. Since there's one, two, three, but the indexes start at zero. So it's zero, one, two. So the last index of a list will be length of some list minus one. So if you run it, we should get two, right? Look, two, okay. So that's a useful trick that we use to access the last element of a list. So if we wanna get the first element of a list, we can print some list of zero, right? So we can print some list of zero. This is the first element of a list. So let's make a list that's super long, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 5,000, 500, 5,000, whatever. And uh, yeah, this. Okay, there we go. This is our list, right? So if we want to do this, also in print statements, you can have multiple things, right? So we could print, this is the first element of some list. And then you put comma, space, and then it'll print the first element of the list, because some list of zero, the zeroth index, it's gonna print one. So it should print, this is the first element of some list, and you can put a colon so we can make it look really nice. And um, then we will put, this is the last element of some list with the method that we just learned. So this is the last element of some list, and we will do some list, and this is the indice that you want in these braces, but we just learned it's length, so you use that length, so you get the length of it, length of some list in there, in those braces, and then you do minus one. There you go, boom. So if we run this, this should work and give us you know, the, everything that we need. So the first element is one, the last element is three, four, five, three, four, five, three, four, five. So let's look at that and make sure that's correct. Let's get rid of this. Look at that, the last element is three, four, five, three, four, five, three, four, five. Cause it accesses the length of some list, it'll access one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The length is 14 and the last index is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So all it does is it gets the length and it subtracts one to get that last index because that's, you know, that's the last index because the indices start at zero. This is really important to understand. And then the la and then uh, the length does not start at zero. It starts at one. So you just have to subtract one to get the correct indice of the list. Okay. Whew. So we know how to make a list. We know how to put stuff in it. We know how to access stuff from it. Um, now let's talk about dictionaries. Dictionaries. So what is... Um, oh, someone said in the comments, we can also use this shorthand. So I didn't remember this, but I do remember it now. You can also do this shorthand. Apparently in Python, if you just put negative one, it will automatically access the last element of a list. So that's actually good to know too. So there you go. You could just use a negative one. But in most programming languages, you do use that, you know, you get that size of it and then you do minus one to get the last element. So Python is nice because it has that shorthand. That's really cool. Fantastic. So, 
what else do we want to do? We want to talk about dictionaries now. So dictionaries. Uh, dictionaries are somewhat like lists, but they're unordered. So we we can call it uh, we can call a dictionary some dict right instead of some list. These are in curly braces, and these are key value pairs. So basically, you can put you know maybe a word. Maybe if you wanted to make a more specific grocery list, you could put like gallons of milk as the key and then the number of gallons of milk you need. So maybe you want to get two gallons of milk. Uh, sticks of butter. And then maybe you want to get, you know, maybe, you, maybe you're interested in five sticks of butter that day. So basically, you have the key, and then you have a value associated with it. And these can be whatever you want. These could be integers. These could be strings. Um, but yeah, you're going to want to put, it depends on what you're doing. So this, these are useful data structures, structures for data, depending on what you're doing. We can do an example, right? So, uh, maybe we want to make, maybe we want to have a store's cost of each item, right? So maybe a grocery store's cost of each item. So we could say grocery costs, right? Grocery costs is equal to you know maybe milk milk will be costing five bucks uh, maybe we want butter butter will be costing one buck maybe we want you know hot sauce hot sauce you know will be costing five hundred dollars okay so let's say money we have let's make a variable money we have money we have is equal to you know one thousand dollars so how mu what what can we buy with this one thousand dollars well let's say we want to we go into the grocery store and um you know we want to buy some milk so let's say that let's say we buy some milk we, we buy some milk so we'll say um Will you make Py will you make Python or teach it? You I don't know, dude. I'm teaching it right now. I guess. Um, I'm trying to think of how we should do this. If we have a thousand dollars, what do we want to accomplish? Let's say, um, stuff we bought. So we have this thing called stuff we bought, and we will put maybe maybe we'll have a list we'll have a list so now we can use all of the things that we have so you know maybe if if uh if grocery cost yeah we'll use all the stuff we learned so far so if grocery cost of milk is um this will be this so you can access the value of a key by putting grocery, you could put the name of the thing and then you put in braces. So this is a dictionary. This is different than a list. You're not accessing by index. You're accessing by key. So you're accessing by the key of the grocery, of our dictionary. So this is a dictionary key values you access by the key. So if grocery costs um, of milk is less than, you know, money we have, we have, so if five is less than money we have, so we have the money, we can afford this. Well then, let's buy milk. Let's buy some milk. So then we will do stuff we bought. Um, how do you append in Python? Is it like dot append or dot add? Add append to list Python. Great. Append, I think it's append. Great, okay, so you use this append method to add things onto a list in Python. So you could actually do this. Append, stuff we bought dot append. So we bought some milk, right? Now we have to do, now we, we bought that. So we have to subtract, so we can do money we have is equal. So we're reassigning money we have to money we have. And then we're gonna subtract the grocery cost. So grocery costs of milk and then we'll di dissect what's going on here now let's print how much money we have now money we have after buying milk right so we bought some milk now let's print 
you know, whatever we have left. Money we have left. Okay, let's print it. So, here we go. Money we have. We have $995 left. So, we're, we have $995 left after we buy some milk. So, what this does is this looks up, okay, grocery costs of milk. So, you look up this key and it returns five. So, if five is less than a thousand because we had a thousand dollars then we will say okay we bought some milk so stuff we bought will add milk onto this list that we bought and we then will reassign we no longer have a thousand dollars so we'll say okay money we have is now equal to what we had a thousand minus whatever the five dollars that we paid for milk you know what i'm saying so we bought it uh that's how much money we have after milk now let's also print, you know, stuff we bought. So this is going to be the stuff we bought. So let's see. So yeah, we're buying some milk right now. Okay, so look, we bought some milk and it cost us $5. Okay, we can also maybe have a variable money we spent, you know. So money we spent money we spent is zero at first so um we can also make a variable we can say cost of milk cost of milk is equal to grocery costs of milk so we access milk we access milk it costs five so five gets assigned to cost of milk so now we can say instead of writing this every time we could say cost of milk if cost of milk is less than the money we have, then we will append milk and money we will have is equal to money we have minus cost of milk. And also money we spent equals money we spent plus cost of milk. Does that make sense? That should make sense. That's pretty straightforward. I don't, I accidentally hit that, so... You know, we're chilling here. We're chilling. Do you guys have any questions so far to the live stream about what we're doing here? I think we're going over some basic stuff, right? So we've gone over some basic stuff. How do you remember all this? Do we need to remember all this off the top of our head? No, this is eight hours. So if you're sitting down here, we have plenty of time. We're going to use all this and build like a big project eventually. This is like, you know, a very long stream very long video this is going to take forever and we're going from beginner to proficient this is not even close to we're going to reiterate over all the stuff we're learning right now like five times we're going to do all the hack rank challenges we're maybe going to do an online interactive course and then after we fully understand all of these things we're going to go and try and build some apps or something like that so you know how far into this are we an hour that ain't nothing we're any, yeah, we're 50 minutes in. This isn't even close, dude. So we got plenty of time. Do not worry. We will continue here and uh, let's go. Okay. So now we're going, we, we bought some milk, right? We bought some milk, cost of milk. You can access by this, right? Maybe we want to buy some hot sauce now, right? So this is the same thing. One thing that you might, you'll know is that of, you can co one thing you might want to know about coding is when you have code and you want to do something similar to what you just did you can just copy and paste you don't have to retype everything you can just copy and paste all the stuff so copy and paste all this we already know this got the cost of milk for us you know and subtracted it and added it to the money we spent and all that stuff so how about we just do the same thing let's do cost of hot sauce so cost of hot sauce is equal to grocery costs of hot sauce so we get the cost of hot sauce we can just do okay replace cost of milk if cost of hot sauce is less than money we have uh 9.95 then we'll do we'll append hot sauce money we have is equal to money we have minus cost of hot sauce money we spent equals money we spent plus co cost of hot sauce now let's see how much money we have left how much money we spent let's see what's happening key error there is no host sauce. So make sure you're typing these correctly. There is no host sauce, guys. So uh, host sauce is not sold at grocery stores, so we have to do hot sauce. My bad. Look at that. Stuff we bought, milk, hot sauce. 
So we bought milk and hot sauce, and we only have 495 bucks left because hot sauce was 500 bucks, milk was five bucks. So you can do this. This is just conditions. So we don't even have enough for hot sauce again. So what if we wanted to do this again? Well, hot sauce, the cost of hot sauces already exists. So we don't have to access the, that again. So we just want to run this code again. So we run this code again below. So let's say we want to run this code again. Make sure you remember the indentation has to be like good or it will throw errors. So we'll append hot sauce again if we have enough money to buy hot sauce. But we won't because we only have 495 bucks left after we bought hot sauce once and milk once. So we can use that else condition we learned earlier. So else we will print, dang it, we are too poor for some hot sauce. So we gonna have to buy some butter instead. So we have to use butter instead of hot sauce on whatever we're eating, which sounds like we're eating some weird stuff in the first place. That's not a really good substitute for anything. But um, okay, let's let's subtract money we have uh, will equal to money we have minus the cost of butter. We don't have the cost of butter yet, so we'll just do grocery costs, grocery costs of butter. You know what I'm saying? So this gets the subtracts the cost of butter from the money we have left, and then we will do money we spent will be equal to money we spent plus grocery costs costs of uh, butter. Okay, there we go. So now we we this will we will run this and see what happens. Dang it, we were too bored to poor to buy some hot sauce, so we're gonna have to buy some butter instead. So we ended up buying butter. And we didn't. We forgot to append it to the list of stuff we bought. Sorry about that. Um, so you gotta you gotta make sure we append butter because we bought butter. My bad. So just put that down here. Stuff we bought append butter if we bought butter instead. So we bought butter. It was worth a dollar. So there we go. That's it. Okay, we get it. Right, we get it. We're wasting time doing all this. Right, we're we're spending too much time doing all this. Um, so let's. What the hell? So something weird happened right there, but that's fine. We'll just do that. Okay, I think we're good. I don't know. I accidentally did something, but all right. Let's uh, let's let's um, you know, we went over some stuff. I'm gonna go over a couple more things, and then let's move on to some coding challenges so that we can uh, get better at this. So, dang it, we we're too poor for hot sauce, so we have to buy some butter instead. So we bought milk, hot sauce, butter. We had a thousand bucks. Milk was five bucks. Hot sauce was 500, so that's 505, and then butter was a buck. So we have 494 left. Okay, let's clear this out. Let's clear this out. I think we have an idea of what's going on. Let's go over a couple more basics, and then let's go see if we can get into a couple of programming challenges, right? So what's a couple other things we can learn? Um, so x is equal to 5, y is equal to 5, right? Z... Now we can add y, we can actually increment y. So we can increment y by doing y equals y plus one, right? So y will equal to itself five plus one. That will be six. So if we print y, we will print six, right? You know, boom, six, okay, right? Pretty straightforward. We can also make y equal to x plus one. X is also equal to five, so it'll still print six. If you make x equal to 10, it'll print 11, right? So you can make variables equal to variables plus other variables, right? Um, boom, you see? Boom, 11, okay, great. Um, what else? You There's shorthand notations for this stuff too. You don't have to remember this stuff, but you can do x is equal to five. What if we wanna increment x by five? We can do x equals x plus five, or we can do x plus equals five. So x plus equals five is the exact same as doing x equals x plus five. This, 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 and this are the same thing. This is just a shorthand notation so that you don't have to write this out every time. So plus equals just means adding this to what this already is. So you can do x plus equals five. That's going to print 10 because x is already five. So you just do plus equals. So we print x, this should print 10, right? 
Oh my gosh. I have got to start doing this more. Okay. 10, great. Okay, 10. What else? There's also minus equals and multiply equals and divide equals. I usually just use plus equal and minus equal. So those are like the main ones that usually come up. Just so your code is a little less you know, congested and filled up. If you're a beginner, it is totally fine like learning this, you know, at the beginning, just doing this. Like I did this for a while. Like my first year of programming, I did this the whole time. I didn't, the shorthand is just, I was like, this is too confusing. I'm not going to do the shorthand. After a while, once you're more comfortable, just switch over to the shorthand. Uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You don't want to be confused at first because sometimes, you know, you might be dealing with like multi-line things. And when you're first getting started, it might be confusing, right? When you have, you know, Y equals 10 um, and Z equals 11 sorry z equals 11 so you might want not want to do the shorthand when you're a very beginner so because you, you don't want to do this you don't want to do x plus equals 5 plus y plus z and then you're like wait what is this equal to x equals x plus 5 plus y plus z so you just want to make sure that you're comfortable otherwise you could just you know just do it like this right x x plus 5, five plus y plus z you know if you don't want to get confused yourself Okay, I think right now is a good time for us to go on the internet and solve some basic coding challenges and solidify everything we just learned, right? We just went over a little bit of a recap. This is how I like to learn stuff, is like doing coding challenges as well. So there's a lot of good websites to do this. Uh, HackerRank is free, so we could do HackerRank. Uh, you could just log in. You log in with your Google email or log in, make an account or whatever. But uh, they, they have like these tracks for these programming languages. So we might go over to Python, you know, let's go over to Python, see if we can find some related coding challenges and uh, solve these. So let's go to, I'm going to go to solve because I already did these and I want to start at the beginning. So here's the first thing we did. Say hello world in Python. So let's, let's solve a couple coding challenges and uh, reiterate everything we just did did drill this into our brains, correct? You know, we're really, we really want to drill this understand, fundamental understanding of all this stuff because you'll forget this stuff unless we go over it a few times. So if we really want to understand, let's just, uh, let's do some coding challenges. Here's a simple line of code that can be executed in Python. Print, like I said, is a built-in function in Python. So we're just going to, you know, print whatever's inside of the string, which we went over. You could print whatever's in the string. You could easily store the string as a variable, then print it. My string equals this, and then you print it as well, right? We were doing that. This is above. Hello world. Try it in the editor below. Great. Um, we're going to go into Python 3. That's what we're dealing with here, right, guys? So print. Hello world. All right, so we can run this. This is how HackerRank works. You just run it. Oh, it's supposed to be exactly. So it's a comma and an exc exclamation point. By the way, if you're confused, one more time before to get here, you just go to practice, you hit practice, you sign in with a HackerRank account, and it'll be down here. You find Python, it's a track. It'll have all these questions. I'm going to solved, but it'll that's because I solved these a long time ago sometime. So you just it'll probably be unsolved for you if you didn't solve these yet. But and then make sure you change it to Python 3 in the editor below. So make sure you're there. Okay. So it failed because we have to hit comma and then an exclamation point, right? So we run code here. Great. So we run it, we pass. They also said we can put it in a variable, which we already learned, guys. So we can go down here. And we could do, you know, my string, just like they said, they give you very clear instructions. So my string, or we could call it greeting or whatever we want. So we'll say greeting is equal to hello world. And uh, then we'll print greeting instead. So we should be comfortable with this, right? This was one of the first things we did. So we'll run this again, make sure it passes. It passed, fantastic. So there we go. We solved a coding challenge, congratulations we are already on the path to success, right guys? So we're printing hello world. What's the next challenge, right? So let's go to the next challenge. The next challenge is Python if else. Wow, that's a big jump from what we were doing. All right, so let's go over Python if else. Given an integer n, perform the following conditional actions. If n is odd, we will print the word weird. 
If n is even and in the inclusive range of 2 to 5, print not weird. If n is even in the inclusive range of 6 to 20, print weird. If n is even and in greater than 20, print not weird. Okay. So, we've got a few things going on here. Um, everything's going good so far. Still, we're still chilling. Okay, great. So, let's just start. If n is odd, print not weird. So how do we think, how do we figure out if something is odd or even in Python? I didn't really go over that. If a number is odd in Python, we can use this modulus operator, okay? So you've you've heard of division, subtraction, multiplication, um, you know, all of these basic things, but there's a modulus thing that we're gonna use to get the remainder um, in code. This is in all programming languages. This is a very powerful tool that we use mostly to check if things are even or odd or if they go evenly into things or if they don't go evenly into things. So we can do four is X and Y is equal to two. And if we print, it's the percent percentage symbol. So this is called the modulus operator. You know, maybe you don't even have to remember it's called the modulus operator. But if we do this, if X mod Y, print X mod Y. This is going to tell us if y goes into two, if if x divided by y is, if y evenly goes into uh, x. So if um, basically it's going to do the division of x divided by y. And if there is anything left over after that, like if there was a decimal, if it was a decimal number, like if it was five divided by two, there would be a remainder, right? It wouldn't go evenly. In, y wouldn't go evenly into X. Like two times two, uh, Y times two would be X, right? It goes evenly into it. So if it goes evenly into it, there is no remainder after that division, right? So X divided by Y, it'll it, this modulus will return the remainder after that division. So you could think of this as like division, but it's go, it's not gonna show you the result of the division. It's gonna show you if there is a remainder after that division. So if there is a remainder, if the remainder is not zero, if the remainder is zero, that means it's even. So this, in this case, the remainder will be zero. It perfectly goes in. The remainder, x divided by y, is zero. It'll go, y goes evenly into uh, x. So there will be, that means, you know, that, um, you know, we can check for even numbers based on that. So basically, if n is odd, print weird. So we can check for even numbers by saying, does two go into that number? Because two goes into all even numbers. So what we can do down here is, okay, we have this number n, right? n is taking the input and it is, you know, doing something. You don't have to worry about this right now. Like this is just basic stuff that comes with the text editor so that we can do stuff um, in Python. So don't worry about this in the challenges. But basically what they're saying is n is the number that we're given, right? So if n, we're given an integer n. If n is weird, if n is odd, print weird. So based on what I just said, if n divided by two, if it doesn't go into two evenly, so if, oh my God, there's so many things to go over in Python. Not equals and equals. Uh, okay, let's go into not equals and equals first. Okay, so... <laughs> So many things, guys. So many things in coding. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. Um, so X mod Y is going to tell us if it goes even. Let's print this first of all. Let's slow down. Let's slow down. We got a lot more to go before we're, you know, maybe I was a little. So X mod Y goes evenly in. Four divided by two. Two goes evenly into four. So we get zero. Now let's do five mod Y. So if X is five, what happens? 5 mod y gives us the remainder of 5 divided by 2, which is going to be 1. Because uh, 5 divided by 2, 2 goes into 5 tw uh, twice, 2 twos, because that's 4, and then there's a remainder of 1. 5 minus 4 is 1. So we're going to look for even numbers by saying x mod 2, right? So we can check that any number is even by doing x mod 2. So if x is equal to 100, if 2 goes into 100, if x mod 2 is equal to 0, we're checking that this, this right here, you can even put this into parentheses. 
You could separate things into parentheses. If 100 divided by 2, if 2 evenly goes into 100, if this is equal to 0, because the remainder will be 0 of 100 divided by 2, because 2 goes evenly into 100, if this is equal to 0, then this is an even number. So print this will give us true, right? You know what I'm saying? This is going to print true. So that's true. If you were to print just this, it would be zero. This is zero, right? Zero, right? Okay, great. So I don't know what else to say about that. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. So we could check if any number is even by seeing if two goes into it evenly. Because two goes into all even numbers. Okay. Now, what is not equals? We can check if a number is odd by seeing if it if it this is not equal to zero. Not equal checks equality, but it's checking that it is not equal. So this print this exclamation point encoding is not. So you could use double equals to check for equality, but you can also use not equals to say you could check if something's equal to something, or if you could you could check if something is not equal. So this this we already know that this is equal to zero, right? This two goes into 100 evenly, so this will value it to zero. Zero equals zero will give us true, right? True, right? Okay, that's true. But it's gonna be false if we say, print this is not equal to zero, but that's false, right? So if it's not equal to zero, it's gonna print false, right? False. Okay, so one more thing here, I'll break it down in even simpler. X equals five. We'll use our conditionals again. If x equals 5, really want you guys to understand this. If x equals 5, then we will print, or no, no, no. If x doesn't equal 5, then we will print x doesn't equal 5. Does x equal 5? False. Or it doesn't print anything. It doesn't, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Um, so we'll, we'll add it. We'll, let's just add else. Print x does equal 5. <sighs> Oops. So we're going to print x does equal 5. Let's see. So look, x does equal 5. x is equal to 5. So we're checking. If x doesn't equal 5, we print x doesn't equal 5. Otherwise, that means x does equal 5. So we print x does equal 5. Now, what if x is equal to 6? Then this will say, if x doesn't equal 5, it doesn't because it's 6. So if 6 doesn't equal 5, that's true. If 6 doesn't equal 5, then we do this. We print x doesn't equal 5. Please tell me you understand that. That makes perfect sense, right? x doesn't equal 5. So it prints x doesn't equal 5. Woo! Okay. We still got a long way to go, too. Okay. Um, all right, great. So we know what not equal. We know that equal. We can use equal and not equal to check that things, two things are equal. So a number and a variable are equal. A string and a string are equal. You can check for a bunch of different things are equal. Let's go back to this. So if we want to find out if n is odd, print weird. Well, we know how to check if something is even, right? If something is even, then the number mod two will be equal to zero because there will be no remainder and two will go into it perfectly. But if n mod two is not equal to zero, that means that two did not go into the number perfectly because the remainder is not zero. So we can figure this out. We could print weird now. Holy crap. We could print weird now. We could print W-E-I-R-D. Okay. Print W-E-I-R-D, capitals, just like you wanted. Okay, so we have that part down of this problem. If n is even and in the inclusive range, so what we'll put down here is else. So else, that means that this number is even now. So if it's odd, do this. Otherwise, it must be even. I mean, there's two options there. The number can be odd or even, right? Those are the two options for a number. So if the number is odd, we print weird. Otherwise, it's even, so we'll do what's in the stuff. If it's even in the in the inclusive range of 2 to 5, 
So then we'll do a check if n is greater than or equal to two. Okay, now we have to stop again because I didn't go over greater than or equal to. Let's go over greater than or equal to really quick before we can continue this problem. So x is equal to two. If x is greater than two, print x is greater than two. Is x greater than two? If x is two, is two greater than two? No, two is not greater than two, right? Everyone agrees with that. That makes perfect sense, right? So nothing happens. So we'll print, you know, we could print, print x is not greater than two, right? It's not, it's, it's equal to two. So x is not greater than two. So it's not just equals, uh, is x less than two? No, it's not less than two, it's equal to two. If x is equal to two, we could say that it's equal to two. Is x greater than or equal? You could do great, so you put greater than and then the equal sign right after it, that's greater than or equal. So greater than or equal means if x is equal to or greater, right? Right, how it says it, right? Pretty straightforward. So if it's two or it's greater than two, so greater than or equal. So it's equal, so this will count. It is greater than or equal. So x is greater than or equal to two, so it prints that. What if it is five? Well, it's all. It's still gonna print that because it is greater than or equal. Should have printed that greater, if x is greater than, oh, no, 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 sorry. X has to be five, not the number. So x is greater than or equal to two. Five is greater than or equal to two, right, right, right? Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, less than or equal to is also a thing. Straight, pretty straightforward, right, guys? You could see if a number is less than or equal to. If it's one, it's less than. If it's two, it's equal. So you could use less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. I'll get back to the programming challenge. So if n is greater than or equal to two, and, oh my God, I didn't go over and. And means that you could have a compound condition. So you, <laughs> There's so many things in code that I have to go over for anyone to friggin' understand this. So, you could check that something is less than or equal to two. So maybe we have a variable called y is one. You have compound, there's compound conditions. So compound conditions, you could have um, and there's two different ways. You could have and, which is going to be, uh, in Java, it's a double and, but in Python, it's actually the word and, I'm pretty sure. So you write and, and then you write y is less than or equal to two. So if x is less than or equal to two and y is less than or equal to two, then we'll make z equal to the x plus y. If both of these are not true, then this will not happen. Um, so you need both of these conditions to be true. Oftentimes people like to separate these for clarity with parentheses. So you could put parentheses around both of these to just, you know, kind of separate them and make them look a little bit cleaner. Oops. So there you go. So as long as both of these are less than or equal to two, then this will happen. And, you know, we can uh, print the value of Z, right? Do, 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 do. There, z is two, great, uh, because this ac actually got executed. So if we put or, now if we put or, only one of these has to be true. So if one of these conditions is true, so like if we put y is five, so y is not less than or equal to two, but x is. So as long as one of these is true, then this will happen. So or is when you want the condition to just have one of the conditions equal to true, that's part of that compound condition, and uh, and is when you want both of them. So in this case, we are going to want both of them. So it has to be in the inclusive range of greater than or equal to two and less than or equal to five. So if n is greater than or equal to two and n is less than or equal to five, then we will print whatever it says. We will print not weird. So there we go. Print not 
weird. Let's look at the next part. If n is even and in the inclusive range of 6 to 20, print weird. Okay, there's also these conditions. There's also um, things where you can... It's also not... You don't just have to do if or else. Because, like, it's not... Sometimes it's not the case where it's just even versus odd. Sometimes it's the case where you're looking for numbers in a boundary. So there's actually another thing in Python where you put elif. And this is in every programming language. And then you have another condition, like, you know, x is less than or equal to 5. Uh, and y is less than or equal to 10 or something like that. So you have these you have these compound conditions. You have, you know, you could have multiple conditions and uh, z is equal to x minus y. And then you could do like else. Uh, this is the basically like the default thing. If none of these get hit, so basically how it works is it'll check this first if condition, then it'll check the elif condition and it'll go all the way down. You could have 10 elif conditions you know, it's else if this didn't get executed, else if the one above didn't get executed, else if the one above didn't get executed, and it goes through all of them, and then finally else, you know? So we're gonna use elif here. So elif, n is in the inclusive range of six to 20. Inclusive means greater than or equal to, equal to, you know, the, the boundaries, so six to 20. So L if n is greater than or equal to six uh, and n is less than or equal to 20, we're gonna print weird, I think, again. So we print weird again. And if n is even and greater than 20, print not weird. So if n is even and greater than 20, print not weird. So L if n We'll put this in a parenthesis. If n is even, so n mod 2 equals 0. Well, we already know that this is even for sure. So if n is greater than 20, print not weird. L if n is greater than 20, print not weird. You don't even need an else. You don't need an else. You don't need any, you know, you don't need uh, L if. You, don't, you can just do an if statement. You can do whatever. So this should be fine. <laughs> There we go. So we passed the test cases. We solved the programming challenges. The intro programming challenges we solved, guys. So we are, you know, we're chilling here. We're one hour and 22 minutes into the tutorial. And, you know, this is, uh, you know, eight hours. So I'm already getting a little bit tired, but that's fine, dude. That's fine. You know, we're going to keep going here. Read two, so this is called arithmetic operators on HackerRank. Read two integers from standard input and print these, and print three lines where the first line contains the sum of the two numbers. The second line contains the difference of the two numbers. The third line contains the product of the two numbers. We went over this stuff, so we're good. Um, the first line contains integer A. The second line contains integer B. So we get, these are, this is how you take input as an integer. Um, so we're taking input, we're taking input, so this is where the user types something, and then you turn it into an int, so you cast it into an integer, because um, it comes as a string, and then, okay, so we have these two numbers, A and B. What they want us to do is print three lines. The first line is the sum of the two numbers. So we know how to do this, right, guys? We're going to print A plus B. We have these two integers. We're going to can print the sum of the two numbers. Second line is the difference. So A minus B. You know, we're killing it, right? A minus B. We know how to do this. We went over all this stuff, right? Uh, the third line is the product. So asterisk, like I said, is the product. Uh, so multiplication. So A times B, right? We're killing it, right? Um, all right. If we run this code, that should be pretty straightforward. There we go. We pass the test cases. Submit killing these programming challenges these are intro programming challenges we know we're doing it we're doing it we're chilling this is how we do it this is how we solidify our understanding of coding and stuff all right go back into whatever we're doing arithmetic python division so there's actually uh integer division and then there's 
at regular division. So there's floating point division and integer division in Python. So if you want your numbers to stay as whole in Python, so if you have, you know, x equals 10, and then you have y equals five, and you want the answer two, right? Just two. You can, the difference is x divided by y, this is gonna give us two. This is, you can put your comments right after the line too. This is integer division, and then this is decimal point division, floating point, in other words, like we said at the beginning. This is, you know, if you want a decimal number, so this is floating point division. So let's run this. So two versus 2.0, that's the only difference. Um, so yeah, there we go, that's it. So you don't need to perform any rounding or formatting operators. So what are we doing? Read two integers and print two lines. First line is integer division. Second, no, 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 first line, yeah, first line is integer division. Second line is floating point division. So we just did this, we're doing it again. So we're gonna print a divided by B for some integer division, and then we're gonna print A divided by B for some floating point division, right? So we're gonna run this. You know, we're killing it. We're ranking up on HackerRank. This is a very popular website, and you know, we're doing good work. Like for, you know, we started Python. We don't know anything about coding like an, you know, an hour and a half ago. We're already solving these challenges. Like, you know, this is good, dude. Okay, next up. So we're, we're, we're ranking up on this site. All right, all right. Loops, okay. So this is, you know, where we basically, this is where we basically have to stop and learn more. We gotta learn more. This is a stopping point we have to learn before we move on to loops. We have to learn before we move on to functions. And uh, these are a very important topic. I wanna slow down a little bit for to, you know, give a fundamental understanding of these. Like there, this is this is the bread and butter of programming. Um, okay. So we had, we had lists, right? We made a list earlier. What if we wanted to print all of these values and we don't want to do this? We don't want to print. What if we don't want to do this? What if we don't want to print all of these values, like write all of this code? Why would we do that? Well, you don't have to. We can actually do something called a loop where we loop through the code. We loop through the code using, there's for loops and while loops. So there's two types of loops, for loops and while loops. For loops are to use the for keyword. While loops use the while keyword. So for, it doesn't matter which one you use, they do the same thing. So you could do for a uh, number, you could, there is a word, you write whatever word you want, you could write for I, for something, for, I'm gonna say number, because there's numbers in some list. So for number in some list, then you put colon, print number. And basically what this is going to do is it's gonna assign number to each element of the list. So it's gonna loop through. It's gonna like, it's gonna go around and around. This thing is like, it's like a friggin' loop. That's why it's going over and over. So basically it executes this line and then it goes to the next number and then it executes, you know what I mean? So this number is set to one. So it assigns it to one. Then it prints one. Then it goes around in a loop. So. This, whatever is in this block, like there could be like multiple, like we could put like five, you know, we could do this. It will, basically this loop is going to go until it hits the end of the list, right? So number is set to one, it prints 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 one. Then it goes back up and it goes, number is two. Prints two, prints two, prints two, prints two, prints two. Then it goes back up and it goes to three. Prints three, prints three, prints three, prints three, etc. Goes back up, number is assigned to four until it gets to the very end. So you could run this and it prints all of those over one, 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 two, 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 all the way until you get to the end of the list. Now, there's a bunch of different kinds of loops. You know, this is one way to the loop. You could loop through a list. You could loop up to a certain number. So you can loop 
you know, number is equal to 50, 60. You can loop up to 60. You can do four. Um, there's, there's these range loops. So you could do four I. So you, I is a common thing. Like you just, I is just a number. Four I in range. So four I in you could do four i in some list. So just just to verify that you know there's no difference between whatever word, like this confused me when I was first learning Python. This word, whatever word you put here, is getting assigned to the element. So I could put four i, and then all of these could be i. So whatever you put here is what you're using as a variable. This i is a variable that is getting assigned to each element of the list. So four, then whatever variable name you want to call it in and then whatever you're looping through that's how it works so you know same thing it did the same thing but with the word i okay so you can also do there's ranges so what if you want to loop like what if you want to print all the numbers from 0 to 100 so you could do 4i in range of 0 to 100 this is a range loop and it loops, it's like a number loop. So it loops from a certain boundary. So you could put a boundary up to another boundary. So you could print I. So if we print I, you know, this is in Python to loop up to a certain boundary. It goes up to 99. So it actually goes from zero to 99. So it basically goes up to the one right before. So if you really wanted to go to 100, you would have to go to 101. That's just, programming is just weird like that. Like indices, they start at zero and they go, you know, I don't know why they do it, but it's weird, but it's fine. Now you also don't even have to do this. You can actually just do, I think you can just do, um, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think when I learned this a while ago, you can just do up to a hundred and one, just like this, right? You can just go up to a hundred and one like this. It does the same thing, right? So you could specify the beginning boundary. You could specify, you know, you could do from zero to 101 and then, you know, the third parameter you can do, you could write how many numbers you want to skip by. So maybe you want to go up by five. So basically what's happening here is basically what's happening here is when you do from zero to 101, I is set to zero. Then it loops. Then I is set to one. Then it loops. Then I is set to two and it prints it every time. Then it loops. Then I is set to three, then four, then five, all the way until you get to 101. Now you want you can change it to increment by five. So it can go, I is set to zero, then I goes to five, then I goes to 10, then tw 15, then 20. So I can get incremented by five as well. You know, there's a bunch of different ways. Hi, will this be recorded after your live session? Yes, this will be, this will be available after the live session. So look, now I goes up by five. So this is how you loop from a number to another number. You can go backwards, you know, the boundary can start it, you know, the, the boundary can start at 100 and it can go to, you know, zero or, you know, it can go to, yeah, it can go to zero and then you could go backwards. You could put, go down by negative five, you know, go, go, uh, do, you know, go backwards. So start, you could start at a high number and you can loop backwards. Look at that. So now we go from 100 down to, you know, if we wanted to go, I think we have to go to negative one to go to zero. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but I think you get the point. It's just like assigning the number loop. Um, now, what's a number way? We A number way. Another way we can print the values of a list, right? We knew, we know that indices exist, right? So we can go from zero to length of some list, like we know that, right? So if we wanna print the values of a list, we can print some list and do that indice thing and pass in i. So this is the number loop. So this, what is the length of the list, right? The length of the list is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven, we would go from zero to seven and i would be zero, then one, then two, then three, then four. So if we printed, if we just printed i, it would just print from zero to seven, from zero to the length of this list but we wanna access those indices. So this is going to print some list of zero. So it's gonna print one. So let's let's actually make these, you know, words or whatever. So, you know, hello, what's up? Nothing much, something. Okay, there we go. 
So this is going to print, you know, sum list of one. So it's going to start at zero. It's going to print sum list of zero because I is assigned to zero. So it's going to print hello. Then it's going to print sum list of one because it goes up by one. Then it's going to print what's up. Then I is going to go up by another one. Then it's going to print not sh nothing much. So that's another way you can do it. So there's two different ways to loop through a list, right? There's different ways to do things. Hello, what's up? Nothing much, something, right? So now we can print all the stuff, right? So you can do this in access by indice, or there's that shorthand where you just do for I in some list, and then I, instead of being going from a number to a number, it's just going and assigning I to everything in the array. I prefer this way in most cases. This is just shorter to write and less calculations with the indices and stuff. So, you know, this is another way to do, oops, we printed some list. We didn't print I, so that was my bad. So you gotta print I. So, you know, I can be assigned to the each element in the list or it can be assigned to a number and then you could access the list by indices. I'm gonna be right back, I gotta go to the bathroom. Yo, damn, dude, this is like so long. But all right, okay. So, um, okay, so we know how to loop through a list. We know how to loop up to numbers. We can, uh, you know, um, what else? What else? We can do some calculations, right? So we can say x is equal to zero, right? And then we could say for i in range of zero to 10. So we'll do 10 loops and we will do x equals x plus five. So this will execute 10 times. We're not using the variable i in here, right? We're not using the variable i at all. We are using, we're just looping from zero to 10. So 10 loops, it's gonna do 10 times x it's gonna execute this line 10 times. So, you know, if I were to do X plus I, it would be, you know, adding I at each iteration. So it'd add X equals X plus one, X equals X plus two, X equals X plus three. But we're not adding I, we're adding five. So you don't necessarily have to use I in the code. Like you can just loop, this can just be the number of times you're looping. This range thing can just show you, be used to do the number of times you're looping as well. So we didn't actually print anything, but uh, we can print x uh, at each time. So this is gonna loop 10 times and execute this line of code 10 times. So if we print x, it should be adding five each time. So look, five, 10, 50, 20, all the way up to 50, right? Okay, so that's another way to use it. Now there's another type of loop. There's another type of loop called a while loop. So a while loop basically is just the word while and then you have a condition and you keep looping until this condition does isn't met. So we could do while x is less than or equal to 50, we will do x equals x plus five. So while loops work so that, and then we'll print x. While loops work so that until this is false, until x is greater than 50, so until this condition is no longer false, you will keep executing everything that is in here. See how it's indented? Everything that's in this indent block with the colon, same as the for loop, this will keep executing until this is no longer true. So this will execute until it goes, until x becomes greater than 50. So look at that, it goes until x is 55. We print x until it's 55, right? So there's two types of loops. Uh, which one is better? Um, doesn't matter, you can use either of them. You have to write them a little bit differently sometimes. Um, 
while loops you're not really for loops are better when you're doing that for you can just you know loop through things in a list or something like that very easily where you just set, assign something to the each item in the list uh there's not necessarily a better one you could do whatever you want basically but uh there might be a little bit more logic involved depending on the circumstance i just burped but that's fine now what now what now so there's other types of loops so you can loop infinitely so while true this will loop forever so this will loop literally forever and your program will break you can't like you have to have some if you put while true this will literally crash your program so i don't really want to do this uh because i think i don't know if you could just take command like control c to stop it from running but um you know your computer's not going to explode but eh, let's just see what happens so it's going forever, right? So we need to stop this. So you have to hit, I hit control C and it stops it. So um, what you want to do is you can put this, this is useful to have something automatically just keep going. But in here, you'll have to say some kind of condition. Like you have to say, if X becomes greater than 50, then we will say break. And break is a keyword in Python to break out of this loop. So it'll keep going until this, and once we break, it'll break and continue with the next lines of code. It'll say, we broke out. So everything down here will, you know, it'll break out of the loop and continue executing. So look, we broke out of the loop because it eventually became greater than 50. Does Python have four each? I don't think so. I think it's just uh, looping, just a regular for loop, right? It's the same thing we just went over. Okay, so no for each, nope. Okay, so we understand loops now. Basically, you have conditions for these loops. Um, you know, this while loops are good for like specific conditions and for loops are good for, you know, a certain amount of loops, like the range. So a certain amount of loops, if you if you know for a fact you want to execute a certain number of times, um, or if you want to go through lists or something like that, that's kind of like the main idea here. Okay, there's also, you continue statements too though. Like, sometimes you might want to not execute code, you know, maybe we're going to print the value of x. x val is equal to and then we put x so maybe we want to print x's value every time except if it's equal to 50 so if it's equal to 50 um we will continue and what continue does it doesn't continue past the code it will just continue and not execute any more of whatever's in the loop so this is still part of the loop, so it'll skip whatever's after it and go into the next iteration of the loop. So if this happens, it's gonna print every it's gonna print x every single time, except for when it is equal to 50. It's gonna skip over printing x and go over to the next thing and then print it again. And then we'll do like if x is greater than 100, we will just break, right? So there we go. It will, like, when x is equal to 50, it won't execute this. It'll just skip to the next uh, iteration of the loop. So there's continue and break. Oh, no, there's no semicolons in Python, sorry. That was my bad. Also, you need colons. Sorry, I'm used to Java. Um, okay, so you need to put break here. And, oh, no, 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 you don't. You just need to, it looks like you just need to... Uh, have the colon. Colons are for the conditions. Sorry. Sorry. I'm used to, uh, I'm used to Java at the moment. Look. Okay, great. So xval, xval, but when it's 50, it skipped over that. It didn't print 50. You see that? So if x is 50, it skipped over that code. If x is 50, we don't print it. So, you know, it continued past these. And then once that, once it, uh, got to greater than 100 we broke out okay so i think we kind of get loops now you know that's a basic to loops loops are just things that happen based on conditions based on a number of times you want something to happen um 
you know, a lot of stuff. So let's see if we can uh, solve this hackering problem. This is called loops. Read an integer n for all non-negative integers n uh, from i less than n, print i squared. Okay. So if it's 5, so we loop up to 5 for all non-negative integers n, we print, and then we print that number squared. So we get a number, and then we loop up to that number, and we print the num current number squared. So for i in range of 0 to 5, or 0 to n, from that from whatever number we're given, i will be assigned to 0, then 1, then 2, all the way until it gets to become n, so whatever number they want to put in. And what we're going to print is we're going to print i times i. i times i is squared, right? So 0 times 0 is 0 squared. 1, one times 1 is 1 squared. 2 times 2 is 2 squared. So we're just i is going to be 0, then 1, then 2, and we're going to print that number squared. So all we do is we print that number squared, loop up to that number, print the number squared, and we pass all the test cases. Very straightforward. We pass, congratulations, we passed. Okay, so we get loops. That's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, we're killing it. What's next? Write a function. Hmm. I don't know if we're ready for functions yet. Are we ready for functions, guys? I don't know. Should we do functions? What's your name? Find a string. Maybe we should do functions. All right. Um, yeah, we could do functions. So I'm not exactly, I don't remember fully functions in Python. So functions in Python. Here it is. So here's how you do a function. So code can be broken up into functions, guys. So in all programming languages, functions are a very, very important concept. Basically what it is, it's a block of code that you can re-execute by just saying this thing, right? So this function, I can call, it's called calling a function, and all you have to do is write the name of the function. So you define a function using this keyword def, and then you write the name of the function. So this person called the function my function. And then you put the parentheses, and then you put a colon, and then you put what happens every time you call this function. So when I call this function, this is how you call the function. This, all the code that's in here will get executed. So it's gonna, print hello from a function, right? Look, hello from a function, great. You could put a ton of code in here, right? You could put so much code in here. You could put x equals five, six, y equals 10. Oops, you know, z equals x plus y. Oops, z equals x plus y. Uh, print, you know, z equal is z, you know, something like that. So every time we call this function, this will all execute. All of this code that is indented after the function, that's going to get executed. Look, oh, look, hello from a function. It does that addition, and then it prints z is 16, because 6 plus 10 is 16. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty good. Hey, will this video series, will they be, yeah, this is going to get, um, no, this isn't a series. This is one video, and yes, it will be uploaded to YouTube. I might just leave this, um, leave this one up. I would, I have to trim the beginning, though, because the beginning is a little bit messed up. Okay. Whew. So we have this function, right? And we can make a bunch of functions that do certain things, you know? Maybe maybe we want to... Fun functions have parameters. So we can make a function called add two numbers, right? And you have these parentheses. And this will add two numbers and then print them, right? Say we want to make a function that adds two numbers. 
we want to take in two numbers, right? And to take in two numbers, you put in these parentheses, you put, you know, number one and number two. And then these are what you're going to take in when you call my two numbers. So I could call any function and pass in two numbers I want to pass in. So, right, I could pass in 10 and 20. So 10 will get passed into this function up here and 20 will get passed into this up here. And then we're going to want to print number one plus number two. So this is going to print 10 plus 20. Boom, see that, 30. Okay, so, you know, that's good. So, yeah, that's what it is. So, th these are called parameters. These are called parameters of a function, and basically when you call the function below, so you define a function at the top, right? You don't define a function down here, because then, like I said earlier, it won't exist yet. Like, I can't put this, I'm not putting this down here. Like, I'm putting it above, so that it exists when I call it. This is calling a function, right? Now you can think of these parameters as variables that get assigned to the values you pass in. So you can see that there's two values here, there's two variables here, and then these two numbers get passed into the function when I call them. So 10 gets assigned to number one, 20 gets assigned to number two. So when you print uh, number one plus number two, it prints 10 plus 20, which is 30, okay. So that's a function that we could do. You could do divide two numbers, you could do multiply two numbers, and just do number one plus multiply by number two. So you could do a lot of things, right? You could pass in a string, right? So uh, greeting, you know? And we could call this function multiple times, right? So we could do say, say greeting, right? Uh, and then this will just print our greeting, right? So you could pass in a bunch of different greetings, right? Uh, so say greeting. And we could call say greeting. So you could, it's basically defining things that will happen every time you call it. And it's really useful. And, uh, you know, we're getting up to a really good point with this tutorial of like understanding. So we could say greeting, hello. We could say greeting, what's up? We could say greeting, you know, yo, right? All of these. So hello gets passed in the greeting and it prints greeting. What's up gets passed in the greeting and it prints greeting. Yo gets passed in the greeting and it prints greeting. So you got a lot of this stuff going on. Boom, it prints all of them. Um, I think what I'm going to do here actually is I'm going to stop this recording. This will be part one actually because I didn't know how much energy this was going to take up. So we are, you know, one hour, we're two hours in. So this is, you know, we did a lot. This is going to be part one of learning Python with me. I'm going to take a 10 minute break so I can go to the bathroom, get some food and, uh, you know, get more energy. And uh, then we're going to continue from here. So this is part one, go to part two. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and go over to part two. All right, BRB in a little bit.